And there is another newly confirmed positive case of COVID-19 in Enugu State. This is the case. The ca this case is a nine-year-old child contact of the fourth case reported in Enugu who had positive travel history. Thus, the total number of cases ever reported in Enugu now rises to nine with seven active cases. The patient has been admitted into one of the isolation and treatment centers. Further contact tracing have been identified and line listed and necessary samples will be taken for testing. Also, the contamination of the patient's home has been promptly carried out. The people of Enugu State are reminded to stay at home and only go out when absolutely necessary. Now joining us live is Dr. Edoga Chima, who is a resident doctor of the Enugu State uh, University Teaching Hospital. Also joining us live is Dr. Elkana Kabilis. He's the HOD of Accident and Emergency State Specialist Hospital in Gombe. We would also have with us Dr. Ogon Nangwanko, who is consultant public health physician, Cross River, Nigeria. We'll be talking with these different doctors at different times. So let's begin with Dr. Chima. Good afternoon, Dr. Chima. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here on News on the R. Now, very quickly, what does the lockdown or preventive uh, measures look like on the ground in Enugu State? Okay, um, the lockdown started um, at the end of March 2020, and the first week it was very um, effective, but subsequently, we could notice that uh, people were not as uh, strict as they were in the first week of the lockdown. You know, when you go into the streets towards the evening, you notice that there are some um, people, you know, on the streets. They don't obey the social distancing. Uh, however, uh, it was until last week that the state government implemented um, a coffee starting by 8 p.m. and uh, so that's also helped in reducing the the social contacts that people mm. have. Right. Yeah, I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Why Why is it significant, Dr. Chima, that a nine-year-old child has tested positive in Enugu State? Okay. Um. It's actually two pediatric cases that we have in uh, Enugu State. Mm. The one you mentioned is a nine-year-old child who um, is a, a child to so one of the adults that came in from Lagos State, while the second pediatric case is actually under five, who um, is a child to a case that was imported from Kano State. So uh, according to the NCDC um, data, as of this morning, we have a total of 10 cases in Enugu, two have been discharged, eight are active, and out of the eight that are active, two are pediatric, and six are adults. Then in terms of the significance, it goes to show that um, this COVID-19 does not affect only adults. It can also affect uh, children. So uh, children are not immune, even though the immunity of uh, the pediatric population and young adults is stronger than those of uh, um, adults, especially those that have comorbidities like uh, diabetes, hypertension, and all. But it goes to show that children can actually get COVID-19. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I know that Dr. Elkana is also there on standby. But uh, very quickly, we'll go to Kano and then we'll get him to uh, react to the issues that are going on there. Dr. Elkana, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Thank uh, you for having me. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Ekana. Now, there's been a lot of conversation going on in the North, as you know, with a lot of focus on Kano State. But many have challenged that the North uh, should not be seen as a charity case and that the Northern Elders should respond to the request. What's your reaction to this? Well, um, thank you very much once again. Um, I'm, I'm based in Gombe at the moment. Mm -hmm. That's where I work. But um, of course, this, the situation in, in the north is, is a concerning one to all of us. And my point or my take regarding that is that, um, yes, the north should not be seen as just a charity case, but um, the call should not just be for the northern elders, but it's a collective responsibility that all the people in the society should take responsibility and be able to do the needful. Um, we have peculiar challenges in the north. If you look at the human capital 
index in the north, you look at the literacy level, and our culture, particularly religion, and our culture of congregating, all these uh, practices that will enhance you know, the transmission of, of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So um, the call should actually be to all individuals, everybody in the society, um, political leaders, religious leaders, elders, senior citizens, and all individuals to be able to... All right, Dr. Elkana, there's a bit of a disconnect there. However, if you can hear me, how protected do you feel as a medical practitioner in the north at this time when people talk about, you know, shortage for PPEs and every other thing that you really need to function as a medical practitioner almost in shortage? Yes, um, I, I feel a little protected. Um, though the shortages are there and you hear a lot of um, complaints you know, especially from the health sector about shortages of, of PPE. My advice would be that health workers should insist on having their PPEs on before working or seeing patients. But we should also understand with the supply chain, most of these things are imported, they are not locally made, and we have these challenges. But it's also good that we should look at um, strategies, contextualize our strategies, mm -hmm. be able to develop our local marks, local protective equipment that will be able to um, supplement whatever the government and donor agencies are giving to be able to help us in this time. All right. I, I will still come back to both Dr. Elkana and Dr. Chima, but I also know that Dr. Mwankwo is still there. Uh, now, Dr. Mwankwo, could you please, first of all, bring us up to speed with the events that is happening in Cross River State as of today? Thank you very much for having me on your show. So um, as of today, as you would know, um, Cross River State is one of the only last two states in the country that doesn't that has not recorded or have a confirmed case of COVID-19. That does not mean that they've not been suspected cases, but so far the results have been negative. So um, currently, Cross River State and Kogi State do not have any confirmed laboratory, confirmed cases of COVID-19. I, I think that's um, the situation where we are now. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it's good to hear that, you know, you're making such progress. Uh, but very quickly to Dr. Chima, uh, who is also on the line. Uh, Dr. Chima, the fact that we have, can you hear me, doctor? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. The fact that, you know, two children are already involved, one has a travel history, is that, and the other, we're not sure whether or not you can clarify that for us now. Does that imply that there's already community uh, spread, you know, it's gone to the stage of community spread in Enugu? Okay. Um, for the two cases, the two uh, pediatric cases that we have, it's actually imported. So, um, is not community spread. So these are the children of adults who came in into Enugu State from Lagos and then from Kanu. Uh, so we have not reported uh, community transmission yet, but that does not mean it is not so. But in terms of the recorded cases, they are imported, and these are the children of adults that came in from Lagos State and Kano State. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, ha having said that, how much of contact tracing is going on, Dr. Chima? Okay. Um, yes, we have a very good uh, contact tracing team uh, that is uh, domiciled or handled by the State Ministry of Health. You know, some, some of the people that do it also at this hospital. I called one of them this morning to know the latest uh, update on that and he told me that every positive case of COVID-19 that they have done extensive uh, contact tracing and that was how they, they got these uh, children that we are also positive because they tested everybody in that family of the adults that we are positive as well as the contact that they have so I can say that the contact tracing has been effective thus far. Mm -hmm. All right. Dr. Elkana, again, we, we're still looking at uh, focus on the north, Gombe, of course, and Kano and other parts that, yeah. you know, we have rising cases, unfortunately. Now, what should be the response of the average medical practitioner who does not have adequate protective gear? You know, one we ask, are they justified in standing down till they receive adequate protective supplies, even though we are in a pandemic? 
Um, yes, um, just like you said, and I must reiterate that as the truth. If you look at the statistics at the moment, you realize that the 10 highest number of cases in all the states in Nigeria are in the north. In fact, 12, 13, with the exception of Lagos, Ogun, and Edo state. So if we are going by the statistics, we could see that the northern part of the country is effectively the epicenter of the pandemic at the moment. The transmission is high, both in new cases and also total confirmed cases. Mm -hmm. And in that case, it will call for drastic measures and measures that should be very, very effective and robust. And I will say for health workers, it's important that they make their demands important because once the health workers are down, which of course we have um, these cases at the moment, quite a number of health workers have been infected, they need to make their case for personal protective equi equipment. So I agree with that 100%. Mm -hmm. But I also see that um, it's, it's good for us to understand the situation, understand the limitations that government have, especially in implementation, because this is not something that you just do and it appears. There is demand, there is supply chain, you know, and logistics all along the way. So all these things are, are there are could be possibilities of challenges in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Dr. Akana, we also hear that, you know, uh, uh, donations are being put together, rallied round uh, for the North. Are you beginning to see any results, you know, uh, from this kind of contribution and help that you're getting, you know, the state uh, is getting externally or even from within, from donors? Um, yes, I was speaking with um, one of the members of the COVID-19 tax force, you know, one of the, the tax force that was um, inaugurated by the state governor some weeks ago. And, and he told me for sure that um, some donations have, have come in. He mentioned the Jack Ma donation particularly that came in, you know, but I'm not in the position at the moment to say particularly precisely the donations that have come in. But um, we have the supplies, though they are Hmm. are not adequate at the moment. So we also solicit for well-being individuals, people that are public-spirited to, to contribute in one way or the other. Hmm. And, and, I'm, and I'm happy that um, a lot of organizations, religious organizations like Christian Medical and Dental Association, Association of Nigeria, the Nigerian Medical Association, Association of Resident Doctors, all these are associations that have stepped up to contribute in one way or the other, however little to see that um, they, they do something in the aspect of um, providing PPEs, be it marks or supply of um, hand sanitizers All to right. health workers. And I think that's commendable and laudable. All right. We, we take our last, last question, which will be to Dr. Nwankwo now. Dr. Nwankwo, are, are you there? Mm. All right. I mean, yes, we, I am. we are yeah. all excited for you in Cross River that, you know, there's no case uh, recorded yet. But how reliable is this record of no case? Since we, we only test when someone is symptomatic, there could be those who are asymptomatic and moving around. How do you know? Well, the truth is that we are not doing population based tests, even for the states that currently have. I mean, they have recorded cases. They do more of targeted testing. So with that, that means that invariably you can have a lot of people that are symptomatic and they are going around with the disease, okay? But the problem is when it becomes very, very um, severe, in severe cases, which would mean they would have to get to the hospital. So far, um, as you can see in Kano, what is, I mean, the picture that is emerging from there. In the past, they said there was no case. And then from out of the blues, we started hearing of um, very, very high rates of death, reported de deaths and all of that. So somehow, um, COVID-19 doesn't as exactly hide when it strikes hard. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that there may be asymptomatic cases. We can't rule that out. But so far... With the way things are, um, we've not yet recorded maybe that those kind of severe confirmed cases. Mm -hmm. Or if there were severe cases, maybe they died without anybody being sure. 
of the true course. Right. And one other thing that is interesting is that, of course, Cross River is at the border, at the extreme end of Nigeria. So it, you don't transit from there to anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping and praying that it holds that way. But given the situation of the way he, he has been displaying, I mean, COVID-19, you can find out that a lot of asymptomatic people, as long as you have asymptomatic people, they recover and get well, which is actually the good news about it. All right. So uh, we, we have to, unfortunately, Dr. Mwankwo, we have to wrap it there. I want to say thank you, Dr. Chima. Uh, thank you, Dr. Elkana. And of course, Dr. Mwankwo, thank you very much for all that you are doing. We appreciate you and we are sending you positive energy and say, please stay safe out there. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. Pleasure. We,